Greetings, back again. It's night time. Let's get started. As you've seen from the title, you know what we're about to do. So let's just get let's get to the beginning of it and let's get moving. This is a Sailor Compass pen that I have owned for a while, and uh, it's uh, the box is already opened, and I've already done a lot of things. But then I never really had a satisfactory ink to put into this pen. Nothing that I ever want, so I didn't throw the box away, and I just put the pen back in the box to store, store it until I wanted to use it. I actually like this box. It's it's a nice, clean-looking box. It's got a textured paper. I'm, it's almost a shame to throw it away. It's got a nice foam lining. And for the cost of the pen, for the, for the amount of money that these pens cost, I'm kind of glad that it comes in a slightly better box than, uh, than like my Profonte did. My Profonte, you know, just it came in a very ordinary box, which is fine for that kind of pen. Like a V pen, you know, it came, came in a blister pack. And that's fine. But when it's something a little better, a lot of people probably will not be getting a lot of fountain pens in their lives. And so, even though this is still a rather relatively inexpensive fountain pen, it's kind of nice that the presentation box is a little better than, than your average run-of-the-mill box that you might get with like a Profonte or a Preppy or something like that, something of that ilk. So I'm glad that the box is a little nicer, even if it uh, is a little bulky to store. And, in fact, uh, if I like this ink, I probably will throw the box away because it'll end up in, this pen will just end up in one of my cases. So as I said, I've had this pen already for a while, and in the box you get the, the converter and the instructions, uh, all of that good stuff. And ink cartridges. And this pen is... Very green. I don't know which color of green this is. I know they make two different colors of green. This is more of the sappy, uh, mossy-looking green. They have another green that's a, more of a stop, uh, stop and go light green. It's a go light green, I guess. Brighter color. And with these pens, I used to worry that maybe they would crack over time, because the uh, these these types of inexpensive pens oftentimes they will crack when you tighten them here but uh i've never had any trouble with any of my compasses and the it seems to be a very robust material and it's pretty thick so i don't think cracking over time would be a problem and if you wanted to eyedropper these you probably could by getting an o-ring and putting a lot of grease on that because the fill gate for these pens right here is located away from the threads so it would be harder for the ink to work its way through the threads to get out of the pen and onto your hands. So let's take a look at the converter. Now I took this converter out once before, so it is already opened and I've greased this converter. So this converter is ready to go. Now when I get these pens new, the first thing I do of course is, uh, even though I wasn't going to ink up this pen, the first thing I, the first order of business was to disassemble the converter and make sure that it, everything was in proper working condition. So at that time when I took it apart, I also greased up the converter because um, the uh, sailor converters can be rather difficult to draw ink with sometimes. And I use silicone grease, and of course you want to keep the grease away from the mouth of the converter. So when I take this converter, I'll just take it apart real quick. These converters come apart very easily. You just twist off this metal ring. You bring the plunger all the way up. And then you can just pull this whole section right out of the pen. I'm going to put a little grease on there. After I get the grease all the way around, I put it back in. And then I unscrew this. You can even see there's grease on there. And then I would put the grease on this uh, connecting rod. And then screw that back down. Then you can take the then you can take this little piece that holds it all together and screw it on. And that's just finger tight, never try to screw it down too hard. I never put grease on these threads because I don't want this to I want this to have a little bite. 
but sometimes I will put a little grease on either the threads here for the for the cap or for this or for the section just because it makes it easier to uh, get the cap out to take the pen apart because this plastic sometimes it will bite pretty hard and then it's hard to disassemble the pen uh, you want to make sure that you keep again keep the grease away from the mouth of the converter and the inside of the pen another place you want to try to avoid any grease getting on is the nib now the nibs on these uh, I watched a video by fig boot and he did a close-up of his compass and he and he saw that there were burrs in his nib and every single one of these pens that I get there are also I've always found that there are burrs in this nib but like I said I've owned this pen for a while so I already cleaned it and did all the maintenance and I just put it in the box for safekeeping but uh, so this pen is essentially this pen is ready to go and uh, the nib is of steel medium fine I'm, I think you might be able to see that medium fine right there if I get it and as you may have guessed I really like these sailor compass compass pens I find them to be very durable again this this ring is not only cosmetic but it is to help keep the material from splitting when you go to tighten on that cap I've never had any trouble with these pens drying out either they've been very very reliable so now we've got our pen let's take a look at what we're gonna put in that pen and what we're gonna put in that pen is this this is my brand new bottle of ink and actually it doesn't look like I even need that we'll take a take a look and see what's inside of here now when I get a new bottle of ink sometimes I don't want to mess the box up so sometimes it's a good idea to just do a little lift on the lid get the lid to come up and oh this is nice again the different colors of the private reserve this is ebony green and we fold them back and pull out our jar of ink and that's pretty nice it's a, a good weight I like that we have some plastic that goes around the cap to seal it in heat seal it I can I wonder if can I just pull that up nope so we'll use our knife here and we'll do it on the back get between the bottle and the cap and just kind of cut that open nope and there we go now we've got a big pot of ink now uh, let's throw that away in the trash and now we're going to find out if this is just a big open bottle let's let's take a look mm. okay so i'll loosen the ink up and put the put the bottle back down so that if it is full to the top like a noodler's bottle you want to make sure those bottles are level when you open them the first time because sometimes they're full all the way to the top and it is just a big open maw of a bottle filled with green ink all right so let's get this let's get this show on the road shall we and let's ink up this pen so we're going to put the pen in we're going to draw that piston all the way down bring it up about halfway right there so we're showing some ink I want to draw the ink down from the section into the pen so that the air bubble is not up here it's at this end so that we can thoroughly draw that ink down I'm going to agitate this a little bit up and down up and down to try to pull some more ink out of the out of the section then we'll drive it up and we keep on going until we see ink bubbling up at the top and there it is a little bit more there we go and let's complete that fill I got a nice nice complete fill now you'll notice something I did that was very bad of me I did not post my barrel because I have in the past <laughs> not posted my barrels and they'll roll off the table while I'm trying to trying to ink up my pen and then I'm stuck with a pen in one hand and a bottle of 
some of you uncapped ink in another. And that can turn into a big situation, a bad situation, very quickly. So there it is. And we will cap that up. So, private reserve. All right. Let's make sure that that's tight. Drop that back in the box. Got just a little bit of ink on one finger there. Otherwise, we're looking pretty good. Okay, and that'll go over into my stack of ink. And let's find something to write on, shall we? Okay, let's get some, get some paper up. Now, this is a pencil sketchbook. This paper is not coated, not treated. This is just regular sketchbook paper. And let's just see what it does. This would be the kind of paper you'd find in like a 99 cent notebook from the supermarket. So the first thing I want to do is see if it's going to really feather out. And that's not too bad. Soaks through a little bit, not too bad. So let me see. This is this is my sailor. Compass. It is green. And we have the ink is private. Reserve. What color did we say? This is. Ugh. Not the best that I've ever written, but it's not bad. So, very pretty. Very pretty color. Nice and dark. Almost a black. And you can see it dries very, very quickly. These sailor pens are not the wettest pen, and so I tend to prefer to use wet inks in them because they uh, they don't tend to be that all that wet. So, being a drier pen, this is what I would expect this kind of performance, and it's working. This ink is working exceptionally well on this really crummy paper. Let's try some better paper. Is this better paper? This is definitely better paper. This is Clairefontaine. This is Clairefontaine coated paper. So let's try that again. This is the compass. And the color is green. And this is. Reserve. And, uh, I got this from Goulet Pens. Uh, this this ebony ebony green. And again, pen. The ink dries very quickly. I can't get any of this to move, which is cool. And one of the things, of course, that I like to do once I get any ink is give it the old water test. And the thing about the water test with this ink is I did not choose it for its water fastness. There are some inks that I definitely choose because I want them to be water fast. This ink, on the other hand, is not why I chose it. I wanted it to be less durable underwater just so we could see what it looks like. And as, as I bring this out, I can see there's a lot of blue. There's a little bit of yellow right here in the center. And then some nice green tones. This will make a nice ocean-y kind of a oceanic color. Now, of course, another thing that I mentioned was that I got some nice paper to write with. To write on and this is crown mill and this paper again wonderful box textured box the uh, box doesn't close all the way and it's a pre presentation box so it's meant that if you were to put it into a store you could place it this way the the box is sealed even though the lid comes off that way no one can 
tamper with any of the item. And, oh, look at that. This box isn't faced. It should have been faced, but it wasn't. There's a strike. <laughs> so, again, let's break the seal on this and take a look and see what our paper is like. We've got an envelope that is proudly showing the the nice uh, the nice green tissue sleeve on the inside. It's a good weight paper. It is textured. Very nice. It has a watermark on it. That's always nice. It always looks good to send paper with watermarks. And this will be great for writing letters. One of the things I greatly enjoy doing is writing letters. I'm, a, I'm an avid letter writer. And this is going to be fun paper to use. I don't know if you can see that it has a slight texture to it with the watermark emblazoned on it. I don't know if the watermark is at all visible to you because of the glare of the light. But uh, very nice. A very nice paper. It's a good weight. And uh, let's just uh, see how it holds up under this ink. So, if I were to start a letter, I would start it with, of course, let me see. So let's take a closer look at what we just wrote. Oh, there's an issue. There's a little spatter on the inside of my cap. I don't like my pens to spatter too much because I'm a bit of a neat freak when it comes to that. That's yeah, not too bad. But let's take a closer look at what we just wrote here. We've got, it doesn't look like it really is feathering out. It looks like it's holding very well. I can tell by the surface of this paper that the paper is treated and it's cut very clean the edges are clean the uh, green edge along here is wonderfully even looks great in fact you can see where they pass over the pass over the printing but that's not a problem and this ink matches up very well to that color I like that a lot this is going to be a lot of fun for me to be able to write correspondence with. After this video, I went back and completed the letter with two different inks to see if there was any show through or bleed through, and it really wasn't bad. Again, this paper is the original Crown Mill, and uh, this is correspondence paper I, that I picked up from Goulet Pens. Thank you, Goulet Pens, for delivering it to me so quickly, along with some fine private reserve ink for a pen that I've had sitting in the box over on the side for gadzooks months. And, uh, well, I hope that you found this interesting and perhaps you'd like to pick up some ink and some paper and maybe even a very nice sailor green medium fine nib steel compass pen. And until next time, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.